lights out and away we go. Oh, and he wanted to go down the inside. The ball, 24 hours. The fact that there's so much news here. We're about to go racing. F1 is not living up to the level it should be, but WEC is. So we're going to discuss what actually is WEC. What have they changed that makes it so darn good? And why should F1 be worried? WEC, AKA WEC, AKA the World Endurance Championship hosts races that are usually six hours long with Le Mans being the iconic 24 hour race that most racing fans will know and that every car manufacturer in the world wants to win. It races at many similar tracks to F1, such as Bahrain, Cota and Spa. And it also has similar teams to F1, such as McLaren, Ferrari and Aston Martin. However, there are two key differences between WEC and F1. In F1, each driver will have their own car. However, in WEC, because of how long the races are, teams run three drivers per car. Now, the second difference is that where F1 runs separately to any other classes, for example, F2, WEC has two different classes of car running on track at the same time. And for Le Mans, that goes up to three. But what changed? I mean, just a few years ago, WEC was on its knees. Teams had left, the racing wasn't super competitive, and fan numbers were down. Well, there's been a complete overhaul of the series with three things making it a much better category of motorsport. Now, the first thing is best shown from the brand new hypercar class, which replaces LMP1. Now, there's two aspects to what they've changed. Firstly, it's the car philosophy. Teams have a maximum power output and drag number, as well as a minimum weight that their cars have to stick to. And if any cars do start to dominate, then the balance of performance brings them back down to the rest of the field. The second thing is that the target budget has also now been reduced with a target set of 20 million euros per season. Now teams don't have a cost cap, but spending more won't gain you money the way it does in F1. So this keeps the costs way down for any manufacturers looking to join. So these two fundamental regulation changes basically guarantee a level playing field where even the slowest car could theoretically keep up with the fastest. And this leads me to the second change in the sport. The way that the regulations have been written mean that the barriers to entry have been massively reduced. And this has created a huge incentive for teams to join. In fact, there are nine manufacturers with 19 different entries in the hypercar class and manufacturers that were considering F1 have now suddenly appeared in WEC. Finally then, the inevitable knock-on of more teams is more drivers. But not just any drivers. We have the likes of Jensen Button, Robert Kubica, and even MotoGP legend Valentino Rossi. These are all incredible drivers, all really quick, which will add to the spectacle of the sport. Now these are great features for racing fans and a great reason to stick around and watch. But they also bring us onto the three problems it creates for F1 and the spectacle that they are trying to create. For the first problem, I want you to look at this starting grid. What do you see? Some of the greatest challenge in the world of motorsport. And we are racing. Ferrari locked out the front row of the grid. Will they still be in front in 24 hours time? A lot of teams and similar cars. And what does that usually lead to? Well, more action and better racing. Everyone is always talking about more jeopardy, more drama, and there's no better way to do that than getting more teams and cars onto a tightly contested grid. How great would F1 be if everyone was in the Red Bull? Well, how about 40 Red Bulls on one grid? It would be even better. Adding that to a race which is at least four times as long as a Grand Prix means there's even more chance for better track action for the fans watching. So, the problem F1 has is that if it wants to compete with WEC in terms of on-track action, they really need to close the field spread that they currently have. The second issue is this. F1 claims that it wants more manufacturer teams in the sport. But in F1, you only have two options to join as a team. The first way is to apply as a brand new entry. But that requires a massive investment. You don't get any prize money for a few years. You're likely to be rejected in the first place. And how are you ever going to beat the giants like Mercedes, Ferrari and Red Bull? Now your only other option is to buy an existing team, but they're gonna be slow and way overpriced and you're inheriting a bad team culture. So you're not likely to succeed that way either. WEC doesn't have these problems. You can buy a car to get on the grid and you can immediately be competitive because of the regulations. All the massive hurdles you have when joining F1 mean a team would spend a lot of money with no real guarantee of making any of that back. The risk just doesn't match the reward if you want to join F1, making WEC the better alternative. Now for the last problem, 
I want you to cast your minds back to 2014. F1 made a massive change which was incredibly controversial for racing fans yet key for the automotive industry. It was the engine change from a V8 to a turbo V6 hybrid. Now we all hate it so why did F1 do it? Now at the time hybrid engines were the big thing being sold on the road and F1 is the best place to rapidly improve technology hence the change to the smaller engine. However, in modern day, because of how stringent the regulations are becoming, it's much harder to innovate in F1. Again, WEC doesn't have this issue. There are key performance targets that you have to meet, but apart from that, go crazy. And that's exactly what the teams have done. The most obvious example is Peugeot with their ground effect style aero compared to the more traditional shape of the other hypercars. But all the teams have unique power units, hybrids, big block V8s, turbos, my favorite engine is the Cadillac, and this clip is why. Exactly. Pretty nice, right? Anyway, the WEC hypercar teams, which all have to be selling road cars to be able to get into the sport, are allowed to develop their technology within the WEC series to then improve their road cars, making WEC a much better testing ground for manufacturers than F1. Now, those are the three big problems that F1 is facing. And because of them, F1 is losing potential teams to WEC. The question is, should it be losing fans as well? And how much do you pay to watch F1 live? In the UK, it's about £480 a year, but you can watch the whole season of WEC live for 60 euros. That's £50 or $64. The whole season. For that price, you get more cars, very different cars, more drivers, closer racing, better on-track action, and longer races. It's ticking all the right boxes that F1 isn't. Now, WEC is building up a really solid foundation to become an incredibly competitive and exciting motorsport, just like it used to be. And I think it could gain a lot of popularity in the near future. But why wait till then to watch it? We've got Lamborghinis, Ferraris and Porsches racing each other for six hours at a time. That's something that F1 has never offered and I don't think it ever will. Even if you don't tune in for the races live, at the very least, watch the Le Mans highlights. It's gonna be insane this year. Now, WEC races on a lot of the same tracks as F1, yet doesn't struggle with overtaking. So that begs the question, what makes a track good for racing in F1 specifically? What features do the tracks need to have? And what's the secret to completely transform a Grand Prix event? I can guarantee it's not what you're thinking. Well, if you want to find out the answer, you can watch this video here. But in the meantime, subscribe so you never miss out on F1 content.